Hey everybody, welcome back to Hogwarts Legacy, where we are astride our new Mount Highwind, about to land in the castle courtyard. And uh, for today, we have some work to do. No need to race now, my friend. Uh, we're gonna take a quick trip to the Room of Requirement. And then we are going to head into Hogsmeade. We've got some things to do. We've got some things to sell, etc., and so forth. Uh, we did pick up a new magical beast, which can give us materials for our traits. And we have a couple of pieces of unidentified gear. So let's head up to the Room of Requirement, for starters. And then we'll go into, like I said, to Hogsmeade. Plus, I think Deke here has something else to tell us while we're here. All right, let's. Deke would like to talk with you when you have a moment. Let's reveal everything at the desk of description. And then we need to go in here and release our new beast. Uh, how do I do this again? We've got quite a few of these things. Wait a minute, I've forgotten how to do this now. He showed me last time. Uh, do I just do I just release it here? I suppose I need to. Wait, R R B. There we go, R B. Okay. Uh, so this is new. I don't know when we picked that up, but this, yes, the Niffler we got. Niffler is a small, furry, and mischievous beast that causes mayhem in its pursuit of shiny objects, which it stores in its marsupial-like pouch. Let's add you to the vivarium. And then I think we got a few more things here, possibly from... Possibly from, uh... Pre-order. Species limit reached. Sell beasts at brood and peck to open space for the species in the vivarium. Okay. So the hippogriff is a majestic beast with the front half of an eagle and the back half of a horse. The hippogriff can soar great distances and commands the respect of anyone who dares approach it. And the thestral is a haunting winged equine beast that is only visible to those who have seen death. All right. So we got a bunch of other guys we can sell. Um, now there was a thing about... There was a thing about breeding. So do we want multiple? Do we want females and males? Possibly. I suppose we can start with one of them. Maybe that, so we have a female moon calf and we have one male moon calf, right? Let's add those two so that maybe we can breed them later and see what that's all about. Uh, now then, next up, I suppose we can collect some plants. And then, what else do we have in here? The loom? We, we did earn a new trait here. A few traits. Yeah, laceration. Greatly increased damage with Defindo. Are we using Defindo that often right now? We are. So we could afford to put something on. Let's uh, let's go ahead and equip our best gears. So handwear. We're wearing this, which has Scorching 1. This is much higher offense and necromantic protection. Decreased damage from, from Inferiori. Yeah, we're not really using uh, the Scorch. So let's equip this. And then let's fix our appearance back to the green gingham. Uh, in terms of face wear, 46, 45, 40, so that's all trash. Head wear, this has destruction one, increase with confringo, that's good. 59, 52, 48. Yes, we'll equip this. And then we need another, probably, Destruction 1 uh, enchantment. Let's fix our appearance. Uh, 
Oh, I'm on faces instead of hats. That's why. Okay, neckwear. Uh, we're wearing 44 offense, so 51. Seems like our best bet. Let's put that back to the green scarf. Where was it? It was this one. Yep. Cloaks and robes. All right, so we're wearing this. 47, no trait. It says 65 with ancient magic focus one. That's quite nice. 58 with cushioning one, decreased damage taken from trolls. No, we'll wear, we'll wear this. And let's fix our appearance again, because you have to do it every single time. And then our outfit. We're currently wearing the jumper school uniform. Nothing's an upgrade. Okay. So now let's go to the loom. And then the things we're wearing... What's really good uh, of what we're wearing? I suppose so we've got hat, cloak, gloves, robe, and where's our scarf that we're wearing? Oh, this doesn't have a trait slot, so we can't do anything to it. All right, well, let's, let's put a trait on this. Uh, I think we want laceration two. We don't have the ingredients. We need diracol, okay. But we can throw, we have a puff skein first, so we can throw a scorching on here. And I don't think, I doubt that these stack, so I think we're probably fine. We could put on decreased damage from goblins on something real quick. Sure, why not? More puff skein fur, okay. So we've got some traits going. Uh, we should go groom our puff skein to get a little bit more for the next time we need it. Where's our puff skein? Oh, and actually, we don't know what you give us, so let's find out what you give us as well. He's getting groomed. He likes that. Oh, he stole the grooming brush. Let's feed him. Feed the puff skein. And now we can collect his fur. And we can collect his fur as well. All right. That's enough beast management for today. Is there anything else we need to do here? We need to speak to what's his name? Deke would like to talk with you when you have a moment. Deke Diggler. What do you got? Hello, Deke. Professor Weasley said you wanted to tell me more about the loom. Ah, hello. Uh, yes, about that. Deke has had a thought. He... <laughs> Seems the room thinks you need more space for your beasts. Uh, as Deke was saying, uh, he's had a thought. Now, Deke knows how you can test the item of clothing that you enhanced in the Enchanted Loom. And uh, perhaps help an old friend in the process. What do you mean? A house elf named Tobbs works for his master, retrieving leech juice in a cave near Hogwarts. Tobbs' master doesn't let him leave the cave. And Deke knows the cave is infested with spiders. That sounds awful. It is. Deke hasn't heard from his friend for a while now. As the item you wove in the loom has an enchantment that might be useful, Deke thought you could test it whilst checking on Tobbs. Well, I suppose if looking for Tobbs also allows me to test my enchanted clothing, then I can do it. Oh, thank you. Please let Deke know what you learn about Deke's old friend. Okay. Now, we just got more space. Maybe we can throw High Wind in there? Oh, this is cool. It's like a different biome. Okay, let's put High Wind in here. And we can put his Maiden as well. And then we'll throw in this Sepulchre as well. 
Now, what kind of interesting materials will you give me? Collect some hippogriff feathers, collect some thestral hair. Okay. So that's good. And now, uh, now it's time for our trip to Hogsmeade. So, uh, we need to go up to... Not Dogweed and Death Cat. What is this? Uh, Golden Appearances. That might be worth doing. Brood and Peck. Yeah, we want to go there. So let's set our waypoint, and then let's travel. So we're going to sell off all of our extra beasts. We're going to sell off all of our extra clothing. Your field guide. I'm most pleased to be included. And then we're going to go see Serona, because she, she had a favor she wanted from us. And we want to keep her in our good graces, because she knows things. Quick. If you're stuck with a Duracool feather, it doesn't half hurt. Hello. Oh, welcome to Brood and Peck. I'm Ellie Peck. And before you ask, I'm out of a Braxton hair. The lot of it was bought up by a trader in Ottery St. Catchpole. Made me take it in person, they did. No care that I had to shut the shop. Apparently had a bad experience with someone shipping them hair for my wampus cat. Must have been someone from America, no doubt. Because we don't even have a Mia. Anyway, what are you here for? Moon fur? Jericho feathers. Always have trouble collecting them myself as the bird keeps disappearing. Cheeky thing. <laughs> Used to carry them in the shop, Jericho's. But people kept asking for their money back when they'd get home and the blasted things would be nowhere in sight. Seems like a poor choice of infantry. Surely that's obvious. You don't mind sharing your opinions, do you? <laughs> Despite the fact that we are a wizarding village, doesn't mean these things appear by magic. Takes a lot to round up these feathers. Don't get me started on thwoppers. Most of the suppliers of thwopper feathers may as well be living in St. Mungo's. Perhaps it was your dealings with whoopers that led to the precarious idea of stocking diracles. Oh, you are well and cheeky, aren't you? Don't worry, I don't mind. Never had a still tongue in my head either. And I'll have you know that it's my eyes' priority to ensure that all beasts are safe and well cared for. Right thing to do and good the business. Anyway, perhaps you should have a look around. Stocks change all the time, and not just because they disappear. <laughs> Always best to pop in whenever you can to get things before they run out, <laughs> which they used to literally do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I will. Take all the time you need. And thank you for stopping by. A treat to have you here. And what do you have for sale? Not really interested in what she has now, for sale. What sorts of beast byproducts <laughs> might you be looking to acquire? So some of this would be nice to have, but we'll eventually be able to make it all ourselves. So let's just sell off our extra beasts. I don't mind selling things for certain clients. You know where to find me. There we go. We're flush. I don't mind seeing you here again. Consider yourself welcome. I wonder what happens if I try to capture one of these in the shop. Revelia. Beast cannot be rescued. Yeah, okay. Well, let's crack open this chest she's left lying around while she's looking the other way. Unidentified face item. Okay. Can we exit here? We can. Okay. And now we're a bit stuck. Oh, we can get up and over the wall. Okay. So next we need to sell a bunch of clothing. Let's find somebody who can sell things. Scriven shaft. Pavelio. Scriven shaft cats. These cats seem to stay close to Scriven shaft's quill shop. 
Perhaps it's the feather quills that entice them. Or perhaps it's the treats the owner often leaves for them. Well, uh, she's not selling anything, so we can't uh, offload our junk to her. So she's not the right person. What else do we have here? Hogsmeade Post Office, Honeydukes. It's interesting, the central area has no shops that, like, you can actually buy and sell things. Uh, come on. I've got to be able to find my way around here eventually. What have we got? Further down, perhaps? There's got to be somebody who sells something around here. Yeah, here we go. The other side of this. We need to see Albie anyway. Let's go in here. Back from your latest flight. I want to hear all the particulars. Good news, Mr. Weeks. With your upgrade, I was able to set a new record at the Eindel course. Brilliant! I knew the upgrade had fantastic potential. How did your broom feel? It rides well. Does get a tad shaky at top speed, and the handle wobbles a bit when I hit a strong gust of wind. Ah, yes. Hmm, I see. I think I know how to address that. Thank you. I owe you one. If it means another upgrade, the pleasure's all mine. You sound as determined as I am to improve broom flight. It's a joy to have a collaborator like yourself. If I'm right, and I do hope I am, you'll be hearing good news from me soon. Thank you again, truly. Okay. So if we wait just a moment here, he should we should this get an owl post from him. Make a good team. All right. Well, let's offload our junk. What are we looking for today? Uh, okay, we've got a ton of stuff here to sell. So we'll just sell everything that we're not wearing except the one unidentified item. All right, that frees up a bunch of space. Thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you again. We'll have to, I guess we have to wait to hear from him for the second one. And then we need to speak to Serona. We've been putting that off for a while. There's a ton of side quests here. Uh, let's see. A friend indeed. Oh, please tell me you have an answer for me about the butterfly. Nope, I totally forgot about it. Hello, Serona. I received your owl. How are you? Hello, my friend. Did you ever find Lord Gog? Hmm. Did he ask us to keep it secret? But probably not from her. Remember, we want her to continue helping us, so let's, let's treat her as a confidant. I did. Thank you. In fact, we're working together to try and rein in Ranrock. Are you? Hmm. I suspected you and he would get along. Perhaps best I don't know details of your plans. And I shall refrain from telling you to be careful yet again. But I hope you will be. I... of course. Your owl mentioned you're needing my help with something. I do. I thought you might be just the person to do a favor for my friend Dorothy Sprottle in Upper Hogsfield. Hmm. I don't believe I've met Mrs. Sprottle. She's lovely. Her late husband, Aidan, was a friend of my father's. In fact, I'd stay with Dot and Aidan the summers I waited tables here as a student. I've seen her a few times since Aidan passed, but the pub's been so busy lately, I've not been as attentive as I'd have liked. I wonder if you might pop in and see her. She may need some help collecting ingredients for her supply of Wiganweld potion. And you could retrieve something of mine in the process. A box, um, full of old letters and such. <laughs> okay. I don't know that we particularly... Well, I guess we could, we could 
pry into this Wigan weld a bit. Why does Mrs. Spruttle keep a supply of Wigan weld potion on hand? Dot's a skilled potioner. She's been supplying traveling vendors with Wigan weld potion, an ordinary precaution that has, unfortunately, become a necessity, what with Ranrock's loyalists disrupting the trade routes. Okay, and this box of letters? Why did Mr. and Mrs. Sprottle have your box of letters after all this time? It's one of a few that I had when I was young. Dot found it when she was clearing out a closet. Can't imagine what's in there. Probably terribly theatrical. The ramblings of a teenage witch and her friends. You're welcome to take a peek inside, if you do find it. To be honest, I'd imagine it contains some lovely memories. Okay, well, I think internally she's rolling her eyes, but uh, as we've said, we want, to, we want to cultivate Serona. She seems pretty valuable as an ally. Uh, so we'll do her this favor. I'll try to go and see her when I can. It would mean the world to me and to Dorothy. Aidan was bringing the box of letters to me when he was taken ill. Doc can tell you where he might have dropped it. Okay. You'll find the hamlet just north of Hogsmeade. Please do give Dot my love. Right, now then, let's go to the map view and find the closest place. Uh, let's go to the world map. Looks like we don't have a flu flame here, but we can travel there. And there's a Merlin trial right there we can pick up along the way real quick. What are you up to now? And this is this lady who thought death was coming for her. Okay, so... Where do we want to go? Uh, I should have clicked the map button. We want to go... Up here, I think. Or no, we want to go to this... We want to go to this first. So we're facing the wrong way. So, is there a flu flames here? There is, I think. So that's fine. We'll just travel along the path. We'll pick up the, uh, we'll pick up the Merlin trial. Let's go! Come on, Highwing! Have I missed it? I might have missed it. Wait, what is this? Place seen better days. What is that symbol? I'm not sure. Is that the Merlin trial? I don't know what that is. Slow down now. There we go. Okay, that's fun. Now, what is this thing? Uh, Few witches or wizards correctly trace the history of Scotland's indigenous mazes back to their rightful source, the 15th century dark wizard known as Eunan Blackwood. Born Eunan Wood to a non-magical branch of the Wood family, Eunan was misunderstood by his muggle parents, and in an effort to fit in, sought solace in the family trade, hedge trimming. He could allegedly control the blackthorn bushes with his mind, creating beautiful designs with ease. This both impressed and infuriated his rather intolerant family. The resentment only worsened upon young Eunan's invitation to Hogwarts, where he was sorted into Hufflepuff House. It was at Hogwarts that Eunan first met one Artemisia Black. Disowned by the Black family for her mother's dalliance with Artemisia's mother, muggle father, the half-blood Artemisia's relationship with blood purity was a complex one. She considered herself worthy of her mother's maiden name and blamed her father for her ostracization. At the same time, she did not fault Wood for his muggle parentage, but rather considered him, too, an unwilling, innocent victim of muggle impurity. Revelia. Huh. So if there was, if we could do something with this, perhaps we could do a maze? I'm not sure what we do here. Um, 
Kio. Leviosa. Confringo. Lumos. Lumos does nothing. Wingardium Leviosa. Arresto Momentum Composer. Flipendo. Defendo. Well, I don't know how we activate this then. Pavelio. Is there another spell I have that might be useful? Freeze, no. Uh, cut, no. The flames, probably not. What is this? Transformation. Transforms objects and enemies into alternate forms, whether puzzle solutions or harmless knickknacks. That might be what we need here. And Bombarda. Okay, so we might not be able to do anything with this. Oh, wait. Oh, all we had to do was walk through it. <laughs> okay, well, let's solve the maze. Let's go around the left wall here. See if that gives us any insights. I think that takes us back to the en entrance. Right, okay. So... I suppose we want to try to get to the middle here. That's a dead end. Uh, back around the outside left wall, or outside wall, or heading left, as it were. So we've been that way. We've got two paths here. That's a dead end, all right. Here we go, making some progress. And there's a chest. Lovely. Unidentified outfit item. All right. Uh, there's a big old chest on the map here. Okay. And I did see... Hold on. I did see nearby there was a... Uh, there was some sort of beast thing. Yeah, we might be able to capture a magical beast here. A giant purple toad. Okay. Here we go, we caught one. Settle yourself, I mean you no harm. So if we want more purple toads, we could capture them, but I don't see why we'd want more than one of each, really. Uh, let's pop the balloons. And here's, a, here's the Merlin trial I was looking at. Oops. Anyone looking for troubles found it in me. Oh, really? How unfortunate for you. I shall get that goblin. Oh. You'll feel that to Leviso. Apparently, that's not uh, blockable. Dark magic, are you? What happened? Thank you. I have business here, so I needed you to leave. All right, so we've got one, two. Three. There's four. There's got to be one more in sight nearby. Where's the last one? It must be behind something else, right? Abandoned long ago, no doubt. There it is. Oh no, that's not it. Okay. 
Where is the last one then? It's an slice a dangling dug bog dueling feet. So levitate it and then slice it, I suppose. Where are you last thing to blow up? Am I not seeing it? Is it is it like immediately visible to the rest of you? Pavelio. There's another Merlin trial over there. There it is. Okay, so the the blue the I I do need to remember that the um, Revelio reveals the the pieces. Merlin himself would be proud. These Merlin trials are not very challenging, I must say. Just find something and blow it up. Don't. So how do we get a dangling one? Hmm. Oh well, okay. Uh, let's get on the broom. Head over here and do Sirona, help Serona's friend. Collect their ingredients. Ah, Upper Hogsfield. Now, where to find Miss Shane Bardolph thought dark magic was the answer. I reckon Rookwood's played a hand in his disappearance. Uh... Yes, there's two things of interest here. Excuse me, did you say something about a Bardolph Beaumont? I did. I don't think we've met. I'm Dorothy Sprottle. Oh, child. I was just worrying about Claire Beaumont's brother, Bardolph. Only he's gone missing. Rumor is he was seen in the forest practicing dark magic. Saw him myself near some ruins with Rookwood's lot I did. I fear he got himself into trouble with the Ashwinders, especially if he made them a promise he couldn't keep. I'd help search for him myself, but no one will risk encountering Ranrock's loyalists. They seem to be everywhere. Why would Bardolph want to get involved with the Ashwinders? Oh, he had a terrible run-in with Ranrock's loyalists changed him. He vowed never to feel powerless again. I think he sought the Ashwinders out to learn their secrets. Victor Rockwood, at least, seems somehow immune to Ranrock's loyalists. All right, so Dorothy and maybe some other people don't realize that Rookwood and uh, the loyalists are sort of working together. But if this Bardolph knows uh, dark magic, maybe he can teach it to us. Do you think Bardolph may have simply run off? No. Bardolph's run that shop with Claire his entire life. He'd not give it up for anything. He swore he'd be back in a fortnight. My instincts so are that he's been held captive or worse. I can certainly look out for him. Any help would be appreciated. You might speak to Claire first. Perhaps she has some insights that I don't. I can tell you that Bardolph was last seen in the forest wearing a particular woolen jumper, one that Claire knitted herself. Okay, well, all that is very interesting. Shop, if you'd like to speak with her. But that's not actually why we came to see you. Hello, Mrs. Sprottle. Actually, Serona Ryan asked if I'd come and see you. Oh, dear Serona, a gem has been for as long as I've known her. 
She thought you might need help collecting ingredients for your Wiganweld potion. And she's correct. My darling Aiden used to collect hawk lumps for me. Since he died, my supply has dwindled. Well, I have like I'm a sorry billion of those. Mrs. Brottle. Oh, thank you. Love of my life. A bit lost without him. If you wouldn't mind gathering some hawk clumps for me, I'd be happy to compensate you for your time. Oh, the magic words, compensation. Believe it or not, I have some with me. Oh, thank you. How wonderful. The traveling vendors will be thrilled to replenish their stock of Wigan Weld potion. Serona also mentioned that Mr. Sprottle was bringing her a box of letters when he fell ill. Indeed he was. I'd almost forgotten. I stumbled upon it just before Aiden died. He was hoping to go through it with Serona over a butterbeer or two. Uh, those two were always like two bow truckles in a branch. Aiden took ill when he was collecting hawk clumps on his way to see her. He made it home, but I fear he dropped the box in the cavern. The cavern is in the hills just southwest of our hamlet. You can gather hawk clumps and collect the box of letters there. Hmm. Do you remember anything about the letters you put in the box? Oh, of course. A few letters from some of her school friends. Some nice memories. I even included a letter Serona had written to me when she was staying with us. Thought she might enjoy reading it. I know when I read writing from my youth, I'm always astonished at how much I've changed and yet remain the same. Serona said she lived with you during the summers when she was at Hogwarts. What was she like? Uh, Goodness. Well, she was almost exactly like she is now. <laughs> Charming, good head on her shoulders, taking care of everyone. I can't tell you the fun we had when she and her friends would visit us during the year, all buzzing about practicing charms. Talented group. Her friend Mirabel was a genius in the garden, learned it all from her muggle parents, if you can believe it. Thank you, Mrs. Sprottle. Thank you. I'll be here if you are able to collect those hawk lumps. I and the vendors I help would greatly appreciate it. All right, well, we already gave her a bunch of uh, hawk lumps, right? All right, well, let's, let's head over and see if we can find uh, the letters here. Oh, wait, it's got the wrong thing tracked for us. Uh, not this. A friend indeed. We want this one. Find and enter the cavern. There we go. This must be the cavern Mrs. Sprottle mentioned. Hork Lump Hollow. All right. Let's go in here. Hork Lump's to Mrs. Sprottle, but I still need to visit the cave to find some... Better have a look around. See about the Hork Lumps and the box of letters. Ah, that's all the Hork Lumps for now. Mrs. Sprottle should be pleased. Hmm. I don't really need more Hork Lump juice. That's kind of interesting. I mean, we're definitely fighting some spiders, right? That's happening. Either I'll have to fight that troll or avoid it altogether. Stupid. 
Ooh, missed that one. Ah, I hit the wrong button. There we go. Rest easy, my large friend. <laughs> well, we... I mean, it's dead. Petunia, you killed it. <laughs> Okay, those hit hard. Let's see. I could have I could have quickly thrown on uh, the disillusionment charm and hidden from it, but whatever. It's easy enough to kill. Revelia. Bunch of hork lumps. Well, now that looks interesting. How do I get down there? I guess I just drop. Yeah. Bunch more hork lumps, some moonstone. What is that? Oh, that's a shrivel fig. Actually found one. Wow, fantastic. Okay. Collect Serona's letters. Oh, here we go. Here's one. Uh, Dear Serona, when I arrived here, I had a troubling sense that in many ways I wasn't like the other first years. I confess I worried that Hogwarts might not have been the proper place for me and pondered sending an owl to my parents asking them to fetch me almost before the first week of classes ended. How did you know? I presume you're not secretly a legend amends, but I wonder that you seem to know my thoughts better than I did myself. That day in the three broomsticks when you spotted me huddled in a corner, staring blankly at an untouched butterbeer and an empty bit of parchment, my quill dripping ink woefully onto the floor, and you came to sit with me, well, I shall never forget it. I recall a sudden sense of relief, as if someone had cast a levitation charm on me, when you told me about how nervous you'd been to come to Hogwarts. I looked at you, and it seemed beyond my imagination to think of you as anything but the confident, contented witch sitting before me. In the days that followed, I marveled at how you charmed, uh, in the non-magical sense, I mean, everyone around you, without apology, embracing who you were and who they were. It was as though a candle had flickered on for me. I realized that I could choose that path as well. Now that my school years are ending, the frightened first-year witch I had been seems worlds away. And I know it's because you saw yourself in that despairing creature in the corner of the pub and so generously extended yourself to her. Yours sincerely, Mirabelle. P.S. Please tell Mrs. Sproddle that I still plan on visiting her and Mr. Sproddle whenever I can for their delightful conversation and, I am unashamed to admit, her incomparable cauldron cakes. Dear Serona, I conjured this wee gift for you as a token of my gratitude. If you hadn't stood your ground on my behalf during Quidditch practice last week, I might have left the team altogether. And now we've won the Quidditch Cup. Ravenclaw House would not be the same without you. Yours sincerely, Sean. My dear Serona, I've sent it out separately to dear Mr. and Mrs. Sproddle for their hospitality, but felt the need to put quill to parchment with my thanks to you as well. What a lovely respite from the castle. I won't soon forget how we giggled about that ridiculous gnome. Did he truly believe that he was singing? And Mrs. Sproddle's steak and kidney pie was simply glorious. I shall be dreaming of it for days. I so appreciate you including me. I fear I must warn you, however, that this does not mean I will go easy on you in next week's match. You know that... Ravenclaw is no match at all for Slytherin this year. Most gratefully yours, Philomena. Uh, we've also got this one. Dear Serona, happy birthday, my darling friend. I sneaked into the kitchens and asked Finky to make your favorite, Cream Crowdy. She was delighted to oblige. Not sure where she got the raspberries at this time of year. Genius, that Finky, from Bess. And dear Mrs. Sprottle, 
Mother and father were delighted to hear that you and I had spent the afternoon at Gladrags last Saturday. Truth be told, I think my mother was ever so slightly envious. I shan't soon forget how heartily we laughed at my efforts to lace the bodice of my new dress. A challenge indeed, as is the rather delicate practice of properly situating a hat pin without wounding either my hat or my head. But I adore everything that we selected, and I have to thank you for now feeling like a marvelously fashionable witch. It was also a treat to dine at the Three Broomsticks without having to clear the tables. I shall own a place like that one day, mark my words. I consider myself more than lucky that you and Mr. Sproddle agreed to let me stay. I know that my parents feel precisely the same way. Yours gratefully, Serona. I think that's everything. Serona will be glad to have this box. I should take this box of letters to Serona. She'll be glad to have it back. Okay, so there we go. We found everything. And not quite as rewarding as perhaps we might have hoped, but again, we want to keep Serona in our good graces. So, let's take a quick teleport back from the fruit through the flu flames, back to Hogsmeade. Uh, Hogsmeade map. And there we go. And another quest completed. I've always said that travel broadens the mind. Oh, please tell me you have- Hello, Serona. I have good news. I was able to provide your friend, Mrs. Sprottle, with some hawk clumps for her Wiganweld potion, and I found your box of letters. Oh, thank you. I knew you were the one to ask. I'm glad I could be of help. Mrs. Sprottle sends her best. Oh, I meant to ask about the letters, her but... and Aiden. Thank you, again, for helping her, and for returning this box of letters. It's nice to reflect on good memories. Collection updated keg shelf? Okay, well... That's that. Uh, guys, I'm going to call it here. I'm going to take a break. When we come back, let's see what we have here. The Ghost of Our Love, Tale of Rowland Oaks. Appearances, no. The Plight of the House Elf. Deke wanted some help here. This is a side quest, though. Do we care about this? Maybe, maybe not. I would like to get Alohomora 2 and 3 going. Hmm. Dedalian Keys. Brother's Keeper. Yeah, the only rewards here are Wand Handle, so probably not. Uh, we've got a couple of um, relationship quests to do here, and then Professor Figs in the Map Chamber. So I think we'll start with this. We'll go to the map chamber and speak to Figs, uh, Professor Fig, and then maybe we'll look into these two. The rest of this, I'm not so sure I care all that much about, except for, uh, obviously, the man behind the moons. So yeah, that's the plan for next time, and uh, until then, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're still enjoying the series. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and uh, until then, take care.